I mean to speak in the name of the Father and of the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Well, we're here. And a really happy, wonderful Christmas to you all. It's such a marvellous celebration. Usually, Mandy and I retreat for a couple of weeks back to Europe. But this year, we thought it important that we were here. And it is lovely, actually, to celebrate Christmas in this beautiful little island of ours. And we have a wonderful program over Christmas together uh, to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Saviour. We have uh, Mass on Sunday morning, and then we have the wonderful Christmas Eve carol service here at 6.30 on Sunday evening, and then Christmas Day Mass on Sunday morning. And I should think that'll be enough church for everybody by the time that we finish that. But it's marvellous to have you all here. You know, this little community is such a, such a joy and such a, a privilege to be part of. And it's over 20-something years now since... Uh, I started with my ministry here, and it really has been just a, a wonderful period. I suppose all of our most important prayers today is that Christ would be truly born again in our hearts. And it's not just a one-time thing on Christmas Day, but we pray through our communication and our relationship with God, that Christ would be born again and again and again in our lives. So not just a one-time epiphany, but bringing us back away from the stresses and strains of normal everyday life, as you'll see in the uh, service sheet this morning. Um, there's a wonderful poem called The Dash, and there is a sense that, you know, we live this life worrying about all the events around us, meeting deadlines, achieving what we need to achieve or think we need to achieve, dashing through between our birth and our death. And there is a sense that we need to allow the Spirit to fit us, for Jesus to be born again in our hearts, that we would truly come to terms with the gift of being. The light of the world, as we hear in this morning's gospel, the light of the world comes to shine in both our and the world's darkness. And darkness cannot overcome that light. The light is there. The light is there to give hope and meaning and trust and faith in our lives. And that is a different dimension to the busyness of everyday material needs and building of scaffolding and structure and all the rest of it in our lives. That is different. It allows us to live life three-dimensionally. It allows us to live life in color. And I always say to people, you know, it's not just a question of what's right and wrong, whether you follow your spiritual journey or not, but one is missing out on so much of the gift of being without that true presence, the tangible presence of God deep in our beings and our heart. And you know, the more that the light, the light of the divine shines in us and through us, the more people will then come to know that light. I don't think anybody was ever persuaded into faith or a relationship with God by just by teaching, by scripture, by the head game. It really is a question of experiencing that light, experiencing the Holy Spirit, which is enlivening. One can actually feel it and touch it. And the reason that one can feel it and touch it is that is exactly what we were created to do. Perhaps I've said too many times in, in this church, you know, we weren't designed to do life on our own. And if we're honest, we know that we can't. We become discombobulated and frightened and fearful and all those kind of things. But when the peace, that peace that passes all understanding, comes and fills us, the issues, the problems, the challenges don't go away. But we're given that peace that anchor, that rock that enables us to, to really move through life as we were designed to move through it. 
In our carol service, we hear the story of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. We hear that well-known story of the shepherds and the three kings, and more of that at another time. But in this morning's gospel, which actually is my favorite reading of the Bible, the first chapter of John, we hear, we hear that the word became flesh. We sort of go behind the scenes rather than listening to that, that story about the birth. We go behind the scenes, as it were, to really get the essence of what God is doing in Jesus' birth. Jesus is the Word of God. From the beginning, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Think about that. God's expression of himself, herself. God's actually tangible communication with creation. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The word that is active, that is relational, that is creative and productive. Creation, if you like, in all its richness, and you just have to look around here with the seas and the hills and the mountains and, and the weather, and in any beautiful place, the universal Christ, the word of God. I think of the times, you know, during my life, that God has rescued me. And, you know, it's interesting. One usually only sees this in retrospect. You know, one's praying about all sorts of things, about circumstances, about family, about friends, about challenges, crises, whatever it might be, mostly for other people. And then you look back. And I think it was somebody who once said, you know, I spent so much time in my life worrying, and most of it never happened. Now, you can explain that away as being coincidence. I've given up believing in coincidences. In my view, it is far, far more of a God incidence, these things. And that is true love in action, in detail. And it does transform one when one goes back and looks at what has happened during one's life. The word became flesh. Not just as a divine, a divine being, but embodying not only all the brightness and wonder of, of uh, life and the light, but also to share in our weaknesses, flesh. To share in our weaknesses, our darkness, our enslavements. What are we addicted to? What actually is holding us back from a full, a full life? All of us have some addictions one way or another. We all have, all of us have temptations one way or another. The word became flesh. So that the word is not just on the fringe of life being godlike, but in the center of all of our human activity. Here to share with us, and I have a wonderful um, a wonderful crucifix in my garden, a huge one that, that came from the UK. And it's interesting, when I sit in, in the, our little garden there and I meditate and I look at the cross and I see what Jesus did for us on the cross, the pain, the blood, the self-giving through that, through that passion and then the emptying out of his totality in his death. Imagine the faith that that must have taken. Just imagine. Not my will, but yours be done, he said. So that God truly did come to show us the way, to show us the way through, to show us the way of really live, to live life in color. He, she is intimately involved with us. He, she is our salvation, our saviour, from that darkness, from those temptations, from those addictions. And if we increase our time for communication with God, we develop that relationship. We listen to experience that light, 
that overcomes all darkness. It liberates us. It heals us. It is truly our saving grace. So we say thank you, Lord, for this wonderful, happy Christmas day. Come and explode with joy in our lives and our beings on a continual basis. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.